So now what I want to pose to you is, let's turn this off. I want to pose to you this same question around, I'll just leave it there actually, different forms and uh, which ones are useful and why. So I want you to consider this. So this is under your not a heading, by the way. So I have a pair of fractions here, right? And if I asked, if I asked year nine or year 10 you to simplify this, what would be the, your instinctive thing to do? Yeah, make it into one fraction. Can you go ahead and do that for me? Take you maybe two, two and a half lines, go for it. Who, who would like more time? Hands up. Pretty much there. Okay, amazing. What have you got as your numerator? 8x plus 7. Happy times. You probably have a couple of lines of working intervening there. Okay. Now I'm going to ask this same question because you have no context to this, right? I just gave you a pair of algebraic fractions and you've turned it into a single algebraic fraction. Under what circumstances might taking this from the left to the right under what circumstances might this be a useful thing to do? What context might make you say, I should turn this into this? Calvin. Fantastic. If I said, if I presented to you this, and I said, please graph this function, right? I think this arguably would be a next step. Uh, you can do some things off of this, right? For example, off of these denominators, what can you tell me about the graph immediately? I've got some vertical asymptotes. Great, okay? But then you're like, oh, I put those in, bang, bang. And then I'm like, oh, I need some intercepts, don't I? So instinctively, you go to this form. In fact, you can read off the intercept, the x-intercept, the one x-intercept, just off of this. What is it? Minus Negative 7 eighths, right? So you're like, cool, I could not see that here. I mean, I could work it out, but this form just makes it kind of immediately obvious, right? So this is why we might go from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. Now I want you to think, and I've sort of like prompted you a little bit, why might we want to go, if I gave you this, why might we want to go in the opposite direction? In, under what circumstances would the left-hand side be more useful? Liam, what are you thinking? What's this topic called again? <laughs> Further integration. So if, for instance, the question was, integrate this, right? I think we are, we've seen enough integrals now that we recognize that this would be substantially easier to deal with. Because you know, you look at, if this is the first thing you are presented, maybe your instinct might be like, oh, maybe I'll expand, maybe I might have an f dash on f situation. Uh, you don't, but you, you might guess that you would because you've got a quadratic down here and a linear one. But if I presented this to you right away, what would you do with it? This is, this is just a pair of logs, right? And we're good to go. Okay. So the kind of thing we're having a look at here is really turning something from the right-hand side into the left-hand side. What you've got on the right-hand side here, these are called, roll of credits, partial fractions. Because they are exactly what they say on the tin. Fractions that each make up a part of the original whole. So the question is, if we do get given this, and we want to turn it into this, how do we do it? And there's lots of different ways. I'm going to show you three, or maybe two and a half, OK? So let's suppose, right? Let's replay, or rewind, I should say. Suppose we get given this, and we do not already know that it's equal to this. What we can say is, if you got presented th with this, right? It's a reasonable guess to say this came from a pair of fractions, each of which had one of these bits as its denominator. Does this make sense? Because if, you're, if someone showed you, oh, okay, hid this and said this is the answer to a question, you might say, oh, they were trying to get common denominators. And then here's one factor on the denominator, here's the other one. Okay? So it is reasonable to guess that what you came from was something like this. Right? But you don't know what the A and B are. That's what your job is to find out. Because once you find them, sweet, off I go, I can integrate. So how do we do this? How do we get from here to here? Well, probably a first helpful line is to say, I can actually, I, I'm really good. You all just did this. I can turn this into this. We're, we're quite good at combining things together, whereas this breaking apart, this decomposition, is something we haven't really learned yet. So if I presented you with this A and B, and we were to put them into one, what would you get on the next line from here? A, a 
X minus one, just pause before you go on, right? This is what you did over here, but it was a, was it a five or a three? I can't remember. It was a three, right? So you're like, oh, I would go three X minus three up here, right? And then things would start to collect. So I've got this, then I've got to get the other fraction and it's got B lots of X plus two. And this I now have a common denominator for, right? Now, remember, I'm imagining a scenario where we've been presented with this over here on the right-hand side, and what I want to turn it into is what I have over here on the left-hand side. But have a look. Do you see how many similarities they are, or there are, between the left and the right-hand side? In fact, if you have a look at those denominators, I can somewhat disregard them, can't I? Because they are identical. So therefore, my next line could be this, just with the numerators. I have to be cautious, having removed the denominators, I'll come to your question in a second, Morgan. Having removed the denominators, this is obviously no longer the same thing as this. If, for example, I asked you to graph or something like that, your, um, your domain has entirely changed, right? Vertical asymptotes are gone. So we have to be careful what we're trying to do. We can do this because of what we're trying to determine here. Morgan. Um, so can we use identity sign? So Free, free, uh, free Can we put in something like this? Is that your question? Okay, so I was going to answer this question later, but I'm happy to answer it now since you posed it. Um, if you're not familiar with this, right, where do we, think back to like year 7 and 8, right? Where do we, maybe you're right, where do we see this sign before? In year 7 and 8? Really? Come on, guys. Congruence. This is in congruence, right? This is in triangles. Year 7 and 8, you, you, you are way too, uh, like, Unless you were doing that in year 7, 8, in which case, good for you, okay? Um, we met this in the context of congruent triangles, and the whole idea was these two shapes are identical in every way. They're identical in terms of their side lengths, they're identical in terms of their angles, maybe they're just like oriented a bit differently, but they're really the same shape. Now we take this idea up into, we've taken this idea up into polynomials, into trigonometry. When you write something like this, what it means is, these two things are equal and they're always equal irrespective of whatever values your pronouns can take on. Let me give you an example of this. My favorite quadratic. No matter what you substitute into x, are you happy to agree that this is always true without exception? Right? There's no value of x you can put in here to get a different thing on the left and the right. Is that okay? And when you come down over here, you have to just be a teeny bit careful, right? Is this always true? Is the left-hand side always equal to the right-hand side under all circumstances for every pronumeral you could ever put in? And the answer is actually no. For the x's, yes. And that's why actually sometimes, you remember I told you about uh, when we're doing integration by substitution and we put in like, we said, let u equal this. And then I did a bit of funny business with, um, I might see something like this, mm. and then I would write, and I, I sort of gave this caution, right? I would write something like this, but I said, hey, but watch out, like we're treating this as a fraction, under these circumstances, it is a lot like a fraction, so we can kind of do this, but be super careful, because it's not really a fraction, there's all kinds of limiting and uh, processes and infinity tucked inside this notation, okay? It's kind of a similar thing over here. There is a reason I have not written that as, as an identity right there, okay? Um, for two reasons. Number one, you have to be just careful with this notation, and I haven't really addressed that. Number two, uh, we don't need that congruent sign, that identity sign, uh, equivalent sign to go ahead and solve this. I'm just going to solve it as it is now. Is that okay? 